Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, man? Good. Just, you know, yeah. dealing one day at a time. I, I can relate. I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just kind of wanted to have um, something at the Flynn where we could touch base with people and kind of share what's going on with, you know, artists in the community that we have relationships with. And I think mm -hmm. everybody's kind of hungry to see what everybody else is doing. Sure. Um, so, you know, dive into your reading about your career is so much fun in the first place. But I don't know, I just dive in the first place. Like, how are you coping? You're a social being. You're a professor and a well, performer. How do you the remote teaching thing is new, you know, mm -hmm. the remote teaching thing. But I like it. I, I, I like it. I, I don't think it's great for the kids. I mean, the kids, there's this is such an important part of their life, you know, but now it's, it's different. It's the way that they're going to learn. So it's, it's, it's a, there's a learning curve for all of us. I miss, I miss hanging out with them. I miss seeing them. I miss just running, you know, so we're doing that. Of course, there's no music. There's, we're not playing live. Uh, ensembles can't exist, but even just playing live music, all of our gigs are, not happening. And the reality of it is, is that, you know, we're artists and we're getting beaten up by this and we see the world, what comes out of our music or our poetry or whatever spoken word or sculpture, it reflects what's happening around us. And we're getting beaten, beaten up. This is, this is a very strange time for us. So some folks feel really comfortable saying, well, I've written five books and <laughs> exaggerating. I, I will say this, I've been, been binge watching stuff on, on Netflix, you know, at nighttime while I, I put the, I put the, uh, what is that called? Subtitles on and I sit there and I mm -hmm. practice trumpet. I'm learning stuff, but I'm not necessarily being super creative. It's I'm at a weird headspace. It's not like I'm sitting there like wanting to compose, or uh, what I am doing is 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 going back and 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 reviewing a lot of things that have to do with jazz improvisation. I'm doing a lot of listening to music, so I guess that's good. I may not be reading the books, but I'm listening to a lot of music and I'm slowing things down. We've allowed technology to take us to a point of, of being so controlled by it, but then by the same token, which I love technology, we wouldn't be talking now, but just to be able to slow down, man, slow down and just go, okay. Yes. Yeah, all of this to say that I think, I think this is kind of an interesting reset button, boom. And people need to think, first of all, we're not going to go back to whatever it was that we had uh, a pre-COVID. We're not going so. back. I don't think so. This too shall pass. The point is that we need to be a lot smarter once this too shall pass. gets. Once we get past this, we really have to be, I think it's important for us to hit that reset button. And we're I think, that, yeah, we're going to have to learn something from it. And our art, our art in America, yeah. Is Are we good at that? Work. Are we good at learning things from there? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, after 9-11, we invaded Iraq. You know? Yeah. I don't know. What right. do we do? How do we learn from this? Do we become more uh, uh, nationalistic, for lack of a better term? You know, do we talk more about, well, closing the, 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 the borders? Do we, you know, I mean, do we do that or do we finally wake up and just go, hey, you know what? This is about humanity. This is the challenge that we have right now with uh, present things as they are because we, we don't know what's going to happen in November elections and in possible January uh, inaugurations of a new administration. We don't know anything. All I can say is this. It speaks volumes when the current administration has not hosted any music in the White House. But my parents came to New York in the late, early, or late 40s, early 50s, and didn't speak any English, and had five sons, raised in housing projects in the South Bronx. Now, because of those silly little 
not very important after school arts programs, they basically allowed the Vega Sons to get a better vision of what the world is out there. They all have other, other things that they do for a living, but they're all involved in the arts and I'm a musician, right? But none of us went to jail. None of us, really, it, 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 it opened up opportunities for us. I mean, the arts allow people and really uh, folks that, that, are, that, that sometimes don't have any other options, it opens the world to them. And it, so when you start destroying arts programming in the, in the inner city, you have problems. When you start cutting arts programming in rural Vermont, you're gonna have problems. Interesting because almost every study will show you the arts has impact on people, on cognitive abilities, on of course. life, on everything. It's all nothing but positive. You, you cannot mean, show me a study that says the arts don't have an impact or a negative impact. They don't well, exist. This will be my 12th year, starting my 12th year now, being in, being, being a, from a New Yorkian to a Vermont you know. <laughs> but, you know, but what Smaller I Smaller tribe. Yeah, yeah, man. So dig yeah. this. This is all I have to say about this. 100% of the students that I've worked with that are not music majors, but are in that area that they call STEM, which everybody bends over backwards to, and let's face it, STEM is really important. You know, that means for those who might see this later, science, technology, engineering, and math. Should be STEAM, but whatever. It should be STEAM, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I have to, I have to tell you straight up, those individuals that are in my ensembles, whether they're astrophysicists, whether they're a neuro, uh, neuroscience majors, where, whether they're engineering majors, whether they're a, a computer, computer science or, or math, that have been in my ensembles, 100% of them. When I ask them this question, they give me the same answer. I ask them, if you woke up tomorrow morning and got an email from the president of the University of Vermont stating that <clears throat> the music department will no longer function as a, as a department in the school. And so we will not offer ensembles or private lessons. 100% of them said the same thing. They said, I don't think I could stay here. I'd have to leave. Uh, if, if you start speaking to the people that are on the front lines dealing with COVID and whatever, I'm sure that these individuals somewhere in their past had some kind of a relationship with the arts in one way or another, whether it's music or painting or drawing, and 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 it doesn't get brought to light. The stuff that that you learn from creating art can affect the way that you you're able to be creative when it comes to dealing with science and math. Well, everything, everything, everything. Your life. So grocery shopping. Right? Thank you. I mean, to think just to process information for crying out loud. Like I find that people don't. Um, don't appreciate jazz and they don't appreciate dance as art forms because we don't teach them. We don't celebrate no. them. We don't celebrate our own American creations like that. And so you have to want to stumble into it in your 20s and that's kind of how it always goes. Well, this is the issue here. We are an industrialized nation that does not have a ministry of culture. No. Understand that. I mean, oh, I the- get it. believe me. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you know that. You're at the front lines of this because the national dominant of the arts and the national dominant of the humanities, they're out here doing like, please, they're trying to survive too. I'm talking about a branch of the government that speaks to the culture of the nation for crying out loud. Crying what is out this? loud. For crying out loud, for what, what? From so much tragedy, so much has come out of this nation when it comes to art. No, I mean, if I just talk about music alone, all right, we can talk about jazz, but we can talk about hip hop. We can talk about gospel. We can talk about bluegrass. Come on, all right. Bluegrass, rock and roll, rock and roll funk. You I know, think, uh, in fact, Latin. that's what won the Cold War when I look at it. It was, you know, as much as anything, it wasn't, a, it was, it's rock and roll and Hollywood movies and jazz. Oh, and my God, I always tell people, look, man, if it wasn't for the arts, I don't know where we would be right now. Where we, where we... on, your, on your neighborhood, like when I think about you growing up in the, in the Bronx, like that is in the heyday of kind of like Latin jazz, right? It was just well, exciting. it was, what it was, was the heyday of like Jazzmobile would come to your neighborhood and who's on yeah. Jazzmobile? You'd have, 
Jackie McLean. You would have so Tito Puente. And then you always had the concerts in the park. So how many times did I see Tito or Machito out there playing in, in, in like, you know, and they would go to the, they would go to the lampposts, open them up to get power. Yeah, it man. wasn't like, it, this was, you know, and get a bunch of extension cords to plug stuff up. And this is what we were, I got to see it. You know, New Yorkers are always going to be New Yorkers, as we can see now with this horrific pandemic. Those doctors, those are New Yorkers. Those yeah, doctors and nurses on the front lines working 40-hour shifts, those are New Yorkers. So do you think this will be the longest you've gone with that between gigs by, by the time this is over? Since oh, yeah, without a doubt. Before? Without a doubt. Without a Amazing. doubt. Oh, yeah. It, it, look at this. My, my, on March 3rd, I'm sitting at Dizzy's Coca-Cola Jazz Club in New York with my New York group with Sherman Irby from the Jazz and Lincoln Center Orchestra playing two sets of Latin jazz. Ten days later, we're on, a, we're on basically national lockdown. Wow. A lot changed. It's sad because I really miss playing my gigs, my gigs up here. I mean, I, I, you know, between the quartet that I have and the Latin jazz group, oh, my God. I mean, you know, the Hotel Vermont, what we created there, you know, what, the, what, what we've created there being the hotel, the musicians, and the audience. Yeah. I mean, the audience is, boy, yeah. do I miss them. And it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard. You know, the longer people keep screwing around with the social uh, distancing, the longer it's going to take for this crap to fix itself. Anyway, all of this to say, as an artist, I have hope for the future. I hope that, I just, you know, artists are super sensitive. So it, this is, her, they're, we're hurting, we're hurting. And it's hard, uh, it's hard to be super creative. So I think what we really, we need to have a real conversation and just say, we need to cool out the whole thing about, oh man, we're just going to create the greatest art in the world right now. And it's going to, just slow down, man. Can we just get past this thing? Try to figure it out. Try to get through the pain of the loss. Let's try to get through it. Right. I mean, if you're able to pull it off, nice. But if you're not able to pull it off, don't feel bad. I okay. got to teach now myself. Let me get ready. Oh, my God. I got I to. Gotta I'll see you later. All right, thanks for the time, man. Be safe. See ya. You got it. Bye-bye. All right. What do we do here? Leave meeting. There we go. Hey. Thank you.